I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my YouTube channel, the website Global Math Institute, and the WhatsApp group Free Math Solutions. Let me thank all the members of these groups to provide you with excellent material related to mathematics. Many students have joined us. They are posting brilliant questions, and many professionals have joined us to provide excellent solutions. I want to thank especially Mr. Narad, who has provided a lot of solutions to some very difficult questions. It seems that most students who have joined are working for competitions. And if you can beat the competition, and if you want to beat the competition, you can join our group, both in enriching with your questions and solutions. Here is one of the questions which is posted by a student who says, find A such that ax to the power of 17 plus bx to the power of 16 plus 1 is divisible by x square minus x minus 1. Brilliant question. Uh, I don't know from where it came, but posted by the student and solution being provided by Mr. Nara. I'm only explaining you the solution in this particular video, and I hope it benefits many of you. I have also provided you with the link of joining the group, WhatsApp group. If you want, you can join the group, post your solution, and contribute free of cost in providing solutions to students worldwide. Okay, so let's try to understand the question once again. We need to find the value of A, which is the coefficient here, such that a x to the power of 17 plus b x to the power of 16 plus 1 is divisible by x square minus x minus 1. Now, how do we begin with this? That is the very first question. Now, when I say divisible by x square minus x minus 1, it also means that it is divisible by all its factors, right? Right, so uh, kind of let me give you an idea what I'm talking about. If I say that there is a number which is divisible by 12, then this number is also divisible by its factors like 2, 3, 4, 6, and so on, right, 12. Okay, so that becomes the beginning point for us. We are saying it is divisible by x square minus x minus 1. So that means its factors to get the factors, we'll equate it to zero. Is that step clear to you? That is a very critical step to begin with. Okay. Now, if that is true, we'll, we are trying to find the factors. Let's find the condition. From here, if we rearrange, we get x squared equals to x plus 1. And in this particular step, what have we done? Now, it's very important to understand that we have written a power in linear terms. So that means if I write all the powers in linear terms, we get a linear equation to solve that will be very good to solve, correct? So that is the strategy. So we got the one of the powers x square in terms of x plus 1. So what should we do? Let's take more powers. So if I now square it, we get a square of this, right? Okay, and that gives you x squared plus 2x plus 1. And now again, we already know what x squared is, right? So we already know what x squared is. So we're going to substitute this value back into this equation. x squared is x plus 1. So we are going to write this x squared as x plus 1, correct? And then simplify to get the linear equivalent. So 2x plus s is 3x. So we get 3x plus 2 as uh, equivalent to x to the power of 4, correct? So we get the value of x to the power of 4 as, let me highlight, so we got x squared as x plus 1, and we get now x to the power of 4 as 3x plus 2. Now you again take the next squaring, right? So when you square now, you get x to the power of 8 here, and on this side, we have 3x plus 2. So we'll square the linear term, 3x plus 2, squaring you get 9x squared plus 4 times 3 is 12. 
x plus 2 square is 4. And well, 9 x square. So x square is x plus 1. So we'll write this as 9 times x plus 1 plus 12 x plus 4. And so we get x to the power of 8 as equal to, let's open this, we get 9x plus 9 plus 12x plus 4. And that gives you the value for x to the power of 8, which is 21x plus 9 plus 4 is 13. So we get another power in linear terms. So I hope you have understood this strategy. With the same strategy, we can continue and find what is x to the power of 16, right? So, okay, so let's go to the next page and uh, we'll take x to the power of 8 as 21x plus 13. We'll square that, right? So, we'll go to the next page and uh, let me write down what we really uh, found so far. So, we are working with this equation, which is x square minus x minus 1 equals to 0. We made it equal to 0. And from here, we get x squared equals to x plus 1. We also found that x to the power of 4 is equal to 3x plus 2. And then we found x to the power of 8 as equal to 21x plus 13. Okay. x plus 13. So we want now what is x to the power of 16. So we are going to square this. So we get square of 21x plus 13, right? So 21 square uh, is uh, 441. So we can write this as 441. You can take the calculator if you want or do it on the side, right? Plus 2ab, 2 times 21 times 23 gives the number 546. And then the square of 13 is 169. Is that clear to you? So we get these squares. Okay. Now we can square and uh, simplify this. We know x square is x plus 1. So we'll substitute this value as we did earlier. So this is a critical value, which is converting all the terms to linear terms. So we get here. 441 times x plus 1 plus 546 x plus 169 and that gives you the value 440x plus 546x gives you 987x and the 441 plus 169 if you add them up you get 610. So that is what you get x to the power of 16. So we have the value for x to the power of 16 also now, which is this. I think we can now substitute back into our equation and work with the equation itself. So the equation given to us is x ax to the power of 17. So, uh, and then we didn't find what 17 is. But we can always take, uh, we can write this like this, ax into x to the power of 16. Does make sense, right? Plus b, x to the power of 16 plus 1. Correct? So we could do this and we can equate this to 0. So when you divide, it should be 0, right? Remainder is 0. That's what we're trying to say. So now substituting what this 16 value is, we get ax times 987x plus 610 plus b times 987x plus 610 plus 1 equals to 0. Now we can expand this and simplify. So when you expand, you get the x squared terms, which is 987ax squared, right? Plus 610ax plus 987bx plus 610b plus 1 equals to 0. Now we know what x square is and that can help us to get back all the terms in terms of x, the linear terms. Correct? So we'll do 
a instead of x square we'll write x plus 1 plus 610 ax plus 987 bx plus 610b plus 1 equals to 0. Now we are going to combine the like terms. So from here you get 987ax, right? So and we have 610ax. So 987 and 610 will be combined. And then this term here will give us a constant term. So that should be combined with these. So we get three constant terms. Do you see that part? So, so let me just highlight the three constant terms which we have. So these three will be our constant terms. As far as the coefficients of x are concerned, so they bx and ax, we get the coefficients of x squared. So I'm taking it to the next page and getting to the next step, which is combining the like terms. So when you do that, you get 1597 ax plus 987 bx plus 987 a plus 610 b plus 1 equals to 0. Correct? So we get two linear terms and these three are the constant terms. From here we can take x common and you get 1597 a plus 987 b and as far as the constant terms are concerned all these are constant terms which is 987 a plus 610 b plus 1 equals to 0. Now if that is 0 then we actually get two conditions from here and the conditions are that 1597 a plus 987 this b should have been inside okay so let me just correct this part so what we get here is 1597a plus 987b should be equal to 0 and also this term 987a plus 610b plus 1 should be equal to 0. Now from here we get a solution and that we could write a as equal to 987 right you could write negative here also but we'll put negative for b 987 and b as equal to negative of 1597. So that definitely gives you a solution uh, for one of our equations and if it is correct then the second equation should also work out. So what you could do here is substitute this in the second equation. So we are going to substitute and check. So if I do 987 times 987 uh, plus 610 times minus 1597 and then add 1 to it, I do get this equals to 0 also. So you could verify this part, right? So you could verify this part. I'll leave it for you to do. So verify. And that indeed is correct, and therefore we have a solution which is A is 987 and B is negative 1597. Correct? So you'll see when you verify this part that I just worked it out, the square is basically uh, 974170, and this thing is, is one less, and so that combined is the same thing, and you do get the right answer. Perfect. So once again, uh, if you really want to join a group where some dedicated people are working hard to provide you solutions for free, I'm very thankful to them that education is actually very expensive these days. And uh, we have some professionals and brilliant people who are dedicating their time and providing solutions to the needy ones globally. So if you want to really uh, get something out of that group, you can join that group. Uh, thanks for your time. Thank you once again. Feel free to write your comments and share your views. If you like and subscribe to my videos, that'll be very good. Thank you and all the best.